Hey, people of YouTube, Wayne Hackman here, AKA Waxstar. And in this strange unboxing stroke how to video, I'm going to show how a modified Raspberry Pi can pick up aircraft transponders from up to 200 nautical miles away, turn it into useful data so that you can see in a graphical interface where these aircraft are in relation to where the base station is set up. So you'll see in the box all sorts of interesting things, but this thing in this white package is what makes all the ma magic. You'll see that I've spoken to an organization called FlightAware, and they've sent me this modified Raspberry Pi with a LCD on it and various other connections, which has been configured with their own software. Now, they send that to me for free, however, with a condition. And the condition is this. If I plug it in, I need to put it in a place where aircraft transponders can be received and that this device is connected to the internet. So they can glean any information that I get, upload it to their service, and then provide it to, for anyone that's willing to pay for their product. There are many of these websites around and you can see their free product or pay for a premium product. So let's look at the equipment in a little bit more detail. Here we have the modified FlightAware box. They send network cables and aerial cables. Uh, you'll also see that there is a high gain antennae with a Raspberry Pi power plus a nice t-shirt as well. The flight feeder is really quite nicely packaged. But if you take a moment and break it apart, for which I'm not too sure if I'm allowed to do so, you'll see that it is in fact a Raspberry Pi Model 3, a Model B Plus with uh, its own custom SD card, which I assume is their own modified Linux for this. Connected to it is a breakout board, which looks like all of the aerial tracking that takes place is done through this. And then obviously that data is pushed to the Pi for which then it is put into some readable form which we'll see a bit later on. They also give you this touch interface LCD which plugs into the, the pins that you can see sticking up out of the board. So let's put this back together and find a nice location to put this Raspberry Pi. Prior to FlightAware sending you this product for free, you have to meet some conditions. And firstly, you have to send them photographs and a GPS location of where you want to put it. Now I've got the perfect building on the site of where I work, which looks over the Rift Valley in Kenya. We're already 8,000 feet up and we should be able to pick up a whole amount of transponder data coming from across the Rift Valley. After about an hour, we managed to put the aerial on top of this building and and run the aerial cable into the building and then where I've got a UPS and some internet equipment which I used to provide internet to this building I rigged it up ready to switch on for the first time and here we have the Raspberry Pi plugged into all of my internet equipment you can see I've given it a static IP address well I will give it a static IP address so let's plug it in and see what happens so initially when you plug the power in You'll see, for those who play with Raspberry Pis before, a very similar booting process, you know, giving all of the information of all the services that are coming up. And then after a while, it boots into this interesting configuration page. Now, I thought that I would have to put all my flight aware feeder details in, but it's already pre-programmed in, which just meant that I needed to go into the network settings, configure its static IPRI and all of the information needed to direct it towards the internet. And that is all I had to do. After five minutes, all the network indicators suggested that the internet and the aerial and the GPS were all connected. So. All I needed to do now was find a computer connected to the same network and direct myself to the IP address that I have given this feeder. 
Now with that fixed IP address, I went to a web browser, I punched it in and up comes the initial configuration page. You can see all of the services in green are active. That changes if it is different. And then below that, you can see the go to the one the 1090 system page, which is the frequency that the data is being collected from. And it brings up locally graphically user interface where it already shows me that there are four aircrafts being tracked. Two aircrafts are providing information about their tail number, their heading and their altitude and two aircrafts are not. Now the information from aircrafts that share their 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 current location can be used to track locally where they are in relation to where the base station is set up and also brings up a small amount of information in the bottom right hand corner but where this product is quite remarkable all of this data as i said is also being transmitted to the flight aware service and so there are people like me from all over the region sending this information i'm pretty sure that there are people even within the region picking up the same aircraft and so flight aware are able to use this data and provide well a free service you can go and have a look for yourself or a paid for service which tracks aircraft now I'm sure that there are hundreds of different applications for people needing to use that um, but as a thank you not only do I get the free Raspberry Pi and all the equipment provided I keep it connected it also gives me a premium subscription to their services and so I can put that on my phone and then anywhere in the world I can see what aircrafts are flying around me and as you can see this particular aircraft that I clicked on shows us it is an Ethiopian airline it shows us the where it's from, where it's going, how long it's into its journey, uh, and all sorts of other useful information. You too can apply to fly to wear for this product. You do need an open view of the sky and a good place to mount it. But I hope this helps you understand how you can use a Raspberry Pi as a flight aware flight feeder picking up transponder information. As always, please rate and subscribe. Do all of the things that YouTubers do. You might even want to click on some of these videos that pique your interest about aviation, etc. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.